without further ado, this is the story of someone like you or like me, a girl living out in the country. This is the story of a former go-go dancer. It's not x-rated, so you keep on your pants, sir. <laughs> There's no moral to this story, nor is there much suspense, but it does, I think, illustrate some salient features of post-industrial capitalism <laughs> as it operates in our society today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, hot off the presses, The Adventures of Go-Go Girl, Episode 29, Crisis Intervention. We start, ladies and gentlemen, with the face of a donkey. We see it here, close up, front lip expressively raised, expos exposing the worn out teeth. Short donkey whiskers bristling from the upturned muzzle, neck extended, ears out to each side. Well, what do we make of such a beginning? Why is the donkey showing his teeth? Why is he surrounded by darkness? Well, let's Look a little more closely, shall we? <laughs> because this is the donkey Nikolai, Go-Go Girl's companion and friend who lives in the barn next to Go-Go Girl's house. And it is dark because it is five in the morning. <laughs> Nikolai is raising his upper lip in the manner pictured here and issuing forth from his mouth, ladies and gentlemen, is that spectacular sound which only a donkey can make. <laughs> but we'll come back to that sound and to this moment a little bit later because here we see the protagonist of our story. Go, go, girl. Hard at work at her job as a nurse in a small Vermont hospital. And here we see the open door to room 222. The patient assigned to room 222 is a mental health patient who has been waiting for placement in a mental health facility for several weeks now. Waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, receiving no treatment, no therapy, just sitting there in room 222 because there's not enough mental health facilities in the state of Vermont and there's nowhere for him to go. But the room pictured here is empty, ladies and gentlemen, because while Go-Go Girl was busy with another patient in another room, the patient in room 222 took off his hospital gown, walked down the hall, got on the elevator, went out the front door, and ran down the street stark naked, yelling, they're trying to kill me, they're trying to kill me in there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This really happened. As a result, go, go, girl, and all of the nurses get sent to a nonviolent crisis intervention training taught by the local sheriff's department. <laughs> In it, she receives a crisis intervention workbook, and she sees a crisis intervention PowerPoint in which she learns about adopting the supportive stance and using the risk likelihood decision making matrix and understanding the behavior escalation diamond which looks a little bit like a kite as you can see in her role playing exercises go go girl plays the part of a patient refusing to cooperate with the emergency room staff but because she wants it to be realistic, Go-Go Girl spits a large loogie at one cop, <laughs> kicks another one in the shins, takes them up and in the supportive stance, and immediately move on to 
a more advanced crisis intervention strategy. <laughs> When she gets home from that hard day at work, Go Go Girl takes a look at the landscape of distant hills and the broad expanse of sky, and she says, At least I have this pastoral calm to rest my eyes on. She looks at her donkey, chewing peacefully in the greenery, and says, At least I can gaze upon this pure animal tranquility, and from him learn to regain my inner balance. <laughs> then she realizes that Nikolai the donkey is standing in the middle of her garden and has <laughs> obliterated the bed of carrots, <laughs> eaten every last one and is now started on a row of once beautiful cabbages. <laughs> Get out of there! Go, go, girl yells. And I won't describe what, af what happens after that in very much detail. I think it's just important to get on with the story. <laughs> when she gets inside, Go Go Girl pours herself a glass of whiskey and sits at the kitchen table to read the mail. On top of the pile is the alumni magazine, which Go Go Girls College faithfully sends every few months to make her feel a lot better about having racked up all that student debt. <laughs> hey, remember when you went to college, Go Go Girl? You went to that liberal arts college and got those neat degrees in history and a minor in creative writing. <laughs> no, I don't really remember it, says Go Go Girl. <laughs> from my college years is that one introduction to abstract painting professor who kept touching my breast during final critiques, but look all these years later and I'm finally done paying for it. Well, reading the glossy alumni magazine does make her feel gratified. Look, there's news about members of her graduating class. Look, four of her old friends just published news books, and oh, one of them is now a head curator at the Smithsonian, and oh gosh, that, that quiet girl that nobody wanted to be roommates with is now starring in a new opera in San Francisco. Well, says Go Go Girl, I really am happy for them and their achievements. That's what happens when you pursue your dreams in a busy urban metropolis like, I don't know, New York City. Of course, when you choose to live a humble, honest life in the remote countryside like me, growing your own food and reading Walden all the time. <laughs> and when you practice an unconventional radical art form like puppetry, well, it's just harder to get noticed and win prizes and have fancy careers or get your book published. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turns the page and there's a whole article about comic book artist alumni Alison Bechdel, who also lives in rural <laughs> Vermont, <laughs> all about what she's been doing since she won her McArthur third genius award in <laughs> Go, go, girl quickly moves on to the next piece of mail, but before she can open the envelope, the phone rings. It's a call from Save the Children, asking Go, go girl whether or not she cares about starving children around the globe. Well, yes, I care about them, Go, go girl says, but I already donate to Doctors Without Borders and Partners in Health, and I really don't have money in my budget right now. What do you mean you don't have room in your budget? The voice on the other end of the phone says, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a nurse. You're a nurse, says the voice. <laughs> Nurses make good money. Well, yes, says Go Go Girl, but I work part-time. And, well, I also 
Well, I support some creative habits with creative habits. <laughs> the voice on the phone says, what good are those for the rest of the world? Well, I make puppet shows, and I have little roadside museum, and roadside museum, says the voice. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if all your money goes to your art hobby, why don't you donate your time to a few good causes? You're a nurse. You could volunteer where there's an Ebola outbreak or work on an immunization initiative somewhere like Angola. Don't be one of those people who just thinks about doing the right thing. It takes a village. Be the change you want to see. <laughs> I'm sorry to say our hero does not rise to the occasion, but instead petulantly stomps her foot and says, but I don't have the energy to be the change I want to see. I'm tired every morning when I wake up. And by the way, how did you get this number? I signed up for the do not call list a long time ago. <laughs> she hangs up the phone, ladies and gentlemen. And here we see her pouring herself another glass of whiskey, but somehow, she keeps envisioning thousands of unimmunized children in Angola. <laughs> oh, what the hell, let's make it a double. <laughs> Next in the mail is an envelope from the Social Security Administration. A helpful update calculating what her monthly income will be upon retirement. Oh, wait a minute, says Go Go Girl. Where are my glasses? They make the print so small these days. That thing that looks like a decimal point, that must be a zero, or maybe those are really two zeros. Where are those reading glasses? And when she finally finds the reading glasses there uh, in the bathroom next to the toilet. Go-Go Girl discovers that no, it really is a decimal point. And if she keeps earning at her current pace and retires at age 65, she will indeed receive uh, $802.17 a month to live on. <laughs> Well, that's not too bad. Could be way worse, Go-Go Girl says to herself. It's a good thing I'm still so young. But then, Go-Go Girl looks up at the bathroom mirror and suddenly with the glasses on, it's as if a whole new face comes into focus, ladies and gentlemen. A whole new gray-haired 51 year old face and suddenly go-go girl realizes that she is a mature middle-aged woman a mature middle-aged woman with no life savings a questionable art making hobby an unruly donkey and a monthly retirement income of eight hundred and two dollars and seventeen cents oh Ooh, shit oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit <laughs> but that she falls asleep, ladies and gentlemen, and has a very peculiar dream. In her dream, she's back in crisis intervention class, but somehow the class is all about her, and she is being forced to revisit all of her life choices using the risk-likelihood decision-making matrix, but she's not sure where to situate each life choice on the continuum, and there isn't enough time, and the pencil tip keeps breaking, and the workbook is filled with pages and pages of to-do lists, but the items on the list are all strange the abstract things like make something of yourself and don't waste your life but go go girl can't decide whether or not she can scratch any of those things off the list and the pencil tip oh picture here you can't quite see it the pencil tip keeps on breaking <laughs> finally go 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 girl throws down the pencil in disgust wait a minute why is this all about me she shouts 
Don't you know this entire country is in crisis? She grabs a piece of chalk and starts writing furiously on the blackboard. Excruciating Supreme Court nomination hearings. The dismantling of the EPA. The robber baron lying misogynist criminal in the White House. Sit down, the instructors shout at her. But she has already gathered her fellow nurses out on the hospital lawn and is teaching them how to sew their nursing scrubs into verbal escalation kites. Stop it, the instructors scream. But the nurses continue taking off their clothes and they start chanting, we are Escalating, we are escalating. <laughs> Ripping off their shirts and waving them around like flags, and the kites pull them up into the vast, tattered, cloud tattered sky, and the wind picks up. But then, out of nowhere, the air is torn apart with a sound unlike any other a deep, keening, gut-twisting, reverberating sound. Go-Go Girl wakes with a start, sweating in her bed. But the sound <clears throat> continues, filling the pre-dawn darkness, wrapping Go-Go Girl in a stranglehold of desperation. The sound seems to be coming out of her own mouth, an eruption of all her bereft, indignant anger at her own abjection. But now, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the supernatural part of our story because as the first rays of light begin to peak over the horizon, the sound begins to change. The sound expands somehow, opening up and reverberating against the distant hillside, filling the sky with its powerful blast. Now, now the donkey Nikolai's braying becomes the clearest, most precise expression of being alive. It is the sound of fierce engagement and boundless energy, a sound made of pure desire. It is the sound of Go-Go Girl's dear companion, Nikolai, calling to her at the crack of dawn, urging her to get up, get out of bed, calling to her to start another day. <laughs>